Hello, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, speak with you again. And today I'm going to uh, provide an update on two upcoming virtual workshops that the Scheinman Institute faculty are involved in. And uh, I'm doing so in, in part because I think you might be interested in, in both the subjects covered and you may have heard about these upcoming events through other promotions we're doing, but maybe this is the mechanism that'll uh, draw your attention to these uh, interesting virtual sessions. Um, the first session I want to talk about, these are all, I should say, all a part of a series uh, we faculty at the Scheinman Institute are engaged in. We started this in, in early fall uh, with sessions focused on the increased conflict that's occurring uh, uh, some of that conflict appears in strikes, of, it, of, it, uh, of the conflict appears more informally at the workplace. And we're um, doing a series of virtual sessions uh, that are addressing the sources of the conflict, the nature of the conflict in particular sectors, uh, but also talking more broadly about um, problem solving approaches that can be used to address that conflict. I should say that one of those sessions was actually held in person just last week. Uh, uh, it was led by Ellen Presida and Katrina Nobles and Cheryl Teer. It was a focus group in which uh, individuals came together in New York City uh, to talk about um, sort of problem solving approaches through kind of a more hands on workshop. So I'm going to talk about two upcoming virtual sessions, the first of which um, will occur on Monday, November 27th. It's uh, administered by the E. Cornell. It's a webinar. Uh, focused on uh, developments in the auto industry. As you know, there's been a heated strike and then negotiated settlements uh, involving the big three auto companies, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis. Uh, in this session, we're going to talk about uh, both the settlements that have been uh, reached and also the tactics that were used. Um, the settlement uh, includes sort of noteworthy gains, and we'll try and highlight those in our discussion. Um, in this uh, session, uh, I'm joined by my colleagues Art Wheaton and Kathy Creighton from the ILAR School, and we're also very pleased that uh, Jamie LaRue, uh, one of the top uh, reporters that's been covering uh, the auto uh, negotiations and strike. Uh, Jamie works for the Detroit Free Press, and we're really pleased she's going to join us on the 27th. That occurs uh, at uh, noon to one o'clock. Uh, you can find out uh, the details of how to register for that session by uh, looking at the Scheinman website, but also you can go directly to E. Cornell's uh, website and register for that uh, event. I will add that one of the interesting uh, ongoing developments that's uh, surprising to me and, and to a number of other observers is even though those settlements uh, negotiated at, at Ford, GM, and Stellantis provided very uh, strong gains to the workforce. Uh, the workforce is now voting on whether they approve of those uh, contracts. This is a democratic process within the UAW. Uh, the contracts uh, uh, seem to be headed for approval uh, with strong positive votes at Ford and Stellantis, but the surprising development, at least surprising to me, is that um, the vote uh, is facing real dissension at General Motors and the plants uh, in a series report their votes as they're taking place. The deadline for the end of voting is several days from now. But the um, contract uh, vote at GM right now is only 52% in favor and some of the big plants have voted against uh, approving the contract and it, it, the contract may go down and it's a real interesting question. We'll talk about it more on the 27th as to what happens if the contract vote at GM is, is, turns out to be uh, negative um, and all. And the other uh, a session I want to uh, uh, remind you of is that uh, it, as part of the series we're doing that I, I just mentioned, uh, we at the Scheinman Institute with the ILR School are doing a virtual workshop that will be held on December 6th from 1230 to 145, led by my colleague Sally Klingel and John August. And that session is focused on problem solving approaches 
that um, Sally and John uh, have identified that seem to be working in, in, some, in many instances as a, as a device through which management and labor are finding ways either to settle conflicts or more importantly, to avoid uh, sort of uh, uh, the ultimate conflict of a strike or impasse, uh, and also on a daily basis are providing a means for labor and management to work through issues rather than let them fester or rather than have them uh, lead to uh, more heated uh, 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 forms of conflict. And uh, Sally and John are both going to provide advice in that session about the uh, techniques and skills they believe are helpful in resolving conflicts in a problem-solving manner. But they'll also give examples across a wide variety of industries. They're not foking, focusing, as we are in the auto discussion, on any one particular sector. They're going to provide examples uh, that they've uh, witnessed, and in some cases been involved in as facilitators in promoting uh, both strategies and tactics for a problem-solving approach to labor management workplace conflict. So there you are. Um, again, I invite you to participate. You can always find information about upcoming events uh, through the Scheinman Institute's website. That's part of the ILR School website. And you also see other promotional uh, activities surrounding these uh, workshops, some of which are sponsored or co-sponsored, I should say, by eCornell and others of which are under the full control of the ILR school. So um, I, I invite you to join those. And in other ways, I invite you to participate in the activities of the Scheinman Institute. Again, you can find more complete description of the wide ranging activities occurring in our institute through our website. Take care.